Hey YouTube. Um, so last night at two in the morning, I decided to post my verbal version of my written review of the scam moving company National Relocation Van Lines. Um, this morning, looking back on all of that footage, that many, many minutes of footage, I decided that that was probably a bit long for most people casually searching the internet for scam moving company information to digest. So I'm going to try to do this recap version in like 15 minutes or less. Here's the deal. If you watch this video and you say, hey, this sounds an awful lot like what's happening to me or happened to me, check out my full video series. Uh, they're really in detail, they're blow by blow pretty much, of the whole experience start to finish. This is just a, an alert, if you will, a short alert. So, uh, my fiance and I moved from Charlotte, or from Philadelphia to Charlotte, and we hired the moving company National Relocation Van Lines to move us under the auspices that our estimate was $2,400 for 5,000 pounds worth of things. We were told by Leo Young, a National Relocation Van Lines representative, that we were going by weight of 5,000 pounds, and he asked us for a deposit of a third of that amount up front, and uh, called us several days later to say that we owed them more money and we negotiated a guaranteed delivery date with Leo because we have animals, uh, snakes that would die without their caging. So we negotiated a guaranteed delivery date with Leo and uh, several more days went by and we received no more information about the deposit. Uh, finally we got in contact with somebody from NRVL and it was a different guy who claimed that Leo was on vacation and that he was taking over the account. Uh, according to him, Leo had never specified our guaranteed delivery date. Um, he had never specified that we were to go by weight or anything like that. He told he informed us that it was a $1,500 charge to go by weight, um, that the company maintained a 14-day period that they could drop your things off within within a, a an actual guaranteed delivery so my fiance got really upset with him on the phone and negotiated with the guy uh, we had to go by weight by by cubic feet instead of weight for our items and he waived the additional deposit he gave us a two hundred dollar price break and gave us a guaranteed delivery date of August 1st for our things and also that our items would not be consolidated onto another truck. A lot of times moving companies will take multiple people's furniture and put them all on a truck together and drive them all down. To us that's how things get lost, that's how things get broken, that's not how we wanted our things handled. So we negotiated for that. Everything was okay. He said, you guys will hear from the movers on the 29th, and then the 30th, we will have the movers call you when they're getting close. The 29th went by, and my fiancé left for North Carolina to sign for our new home, and we never heard anything from them. The 29th went by without a word from anybody. We contacted everyone we could contact, and no one picked up. We left messages with Ryan with Leo with customer service no one picked up no one answered nothing uh, the 30th rolls around and finally we get a call from the guys and they're like we're two hours away so they show up around noon when in a rider truck a rented rider truck uh, like 26 feet and proceed to start loading my things into the truck I told them that I did not need all of my things taped, that we had moved our furniture several times with just furniture pads and it worked out fine, and they taped up my stuff and bubble wrapped the bejesus out of everything anyway, and come to find out later that all of that was $3.60 a roll, so um, again, which I did not consent to, 
Uh, at the end of the day, the foreman asked me to come inside so we could discuss the status of the move and said that they were getting close to being done. I came upstairs and the truck drove away. And at the time I thought, no, no okay, no problem. Uh, they're done. So that's when the guy whipped out the contract and said that they had used way more space than was previously allotted. They had told me initially, or Leo had told me initially that when they got close to the allotted space that they would alert me in case I wanted to make other arrangements uh, financially or whatever needed to be done. They did no such thing. And that now my total for my move where I was quoted $2,400, um, my move is now quoted at $6,900, almost $7,000. $2,400 to $7,000. Um, yeah, so I didn't know what to do. Uh, it was just me and him in this abandoned house pretty much with my dog and my snakes and I needed to get going to North Carolina and I had no one to back me up. I didn't know if I could call the police. I figured I probably couldn't um, since we were working off of an estimate anyway. And uh, I asked him uh, if he could provide proof of the cubic feet because there had been no, no visual inspection done by me of the whole thing. He uh, informed me that in order to do that, the truck would have to come back. They would have to unload things off of the truck and measure for me, and that nothing was coming off of the truck without full payment of $6,900. So my things were being held hostage for $6,900, uh, which $6,900 is all the money I have in the world. Pretty much every penny from my savings account. Um... It's like they knew how much they could charge me. It's really creepy. So, um, I didn't know what to do. So I signed, um, I signed away my life savings to this moving company who's going God knows where with my things. Um, and I thought it was, it was done. And I got a couple hours sleep, drove to North Carolina, hoped I would beep in there. Uh, got here started calling to find out when the truck was going to come and got a hold of nobody. Now, all of these phone calls we're making up until this point and up until the first were all done during weekday business hours and we got in touch with nobody. No Leo, no Ryan, no customer service, no dispatch, no nobody. So, uh, the whole day, nobody answered. Uh, so the 31st went by, the first came, which was our guaranteed delivery date, and we didn't hear from anybody then either. And it's pretty much just us and a blow-up mattress in the house, and we don't really have anything to do but continue to call, so that's what we did the whole day, called. And got in touch with nobody, nobody called us, and um, we finally got in touch with, a f with the foreman from our job, through a lot of hunting and digging and, and trying different phone numbers. And he informed us that the truck was not going to be there until the 3rd, um, which put our animals in mortal danger. And we explained to him that we had a guarantee, and he said, that's just the way it is. It's at a warehouse in Baltimore consolidated onto a truck with two other orders, which, we, again, we would specified that that not be done. We had a guarantee on that. And that it was going to get there when it got there. Great. So I started doing some homework into national relocation and found out a lot of creepy things about them. They are not accredited with the Better Business Bureau. They have a C- minus review rating on Better Business Bureau's website. They claim a presence on Facebook, Google+, uh, Twitter. None of that's real. Um... The addresses they list to their DOT numbers and on their websites are all apartment complexes um, in various states around the East Coast, so um, that's a little creepy, uh, to say the least. Um, so I started to get really nervous, and they tag every single box. If you if you go over to the to the right sidebar 
and you look up some of the videos I'm sure that will come up uh, linked to mine are like 10 signs to avoid a road mover national relocation van lines has every single one from the deposit to the rented unmarked truck to the price hike to the cubic feet every single thing is on there every last one so <clears throat> the third rolls around um the truck did come and well it, at first it didn't come so the movers told us that they couldn't get the truck to our house that there were signs posting that it was illegal for trucks to be back near our home so uh they told us it was either going to be a $1,900 charge to rent a shuttle to bring our things, which originally, uh, when Leo told us that this might happen with our home in Philadelphia, that we would be charged $350. 350 versus now it's $1,900. Um, which we didn't have, because we had already signed away our entire life savings to them. Um, or they would bring the truck in illegally for an under-the-table $600 bribe to break the law. Um, they would not wait until a fine was issued. They would not allow the company to bill me. They wanted a personal bribe of $600. Um, yeah. So I wanted to see the sign for myself, drove out there. Sure enough, there were signs. Um, I uh, had asked them if there was another way into our neighborhood, and they said no, that they had explored every possibility, and that there was no other way in. I found a way in within five minutes that didn't have signs. Um, they were really mad, and asked to follow us so they could see this route for themselves. And so, I showed them. They brought the truck, they said that the truck wouldn't, wouldn't make it, which I found hard to believe. Um, so I found another route. And there was another problem, so I found another route. Three routes where they said that there was only the illegal one. In 15 minutes, I found three. Um, so that was really fun. <clears throat> and then they couldn't back into our cul-de-sac, and it was a whole thing, and they backed up, like, to 70 feet of our driveway and then refused to to continue I don't know why um, then they told my fiance that they were going to charge us for the distance between the back of the moving truck and our driveway which the only reason there was distance is because the guy did not want to back up the moving truck any further um, he estimated that it was a hundred and fifty feet um, my fiance asked him for proof and the guy measured it out with his feet and with his actual physical feet um and my fiance was just kind of blown away and was like uh do you have like a measuring tape or something so i know this is for real and the guy said that he didn't have a yardstick or a measuring tape or anything and that he we need to borrow one of ours. And of course my fiance was like, you, everything I own is on your truck, including my yardstick. So no, I don't have one. And the guy told him that he was an expert at measuring with his feet. So that we were supposed to give them another like $95 based on this foot estimate by this guy. Well, we had read the contracts and there was a clause in the contract that said that any other charge has to be agreed upon before delivery. So we got out of that situation uh, because we were like, okay. Um, then they wouldn't take cashier's check, so my fiance had to go out and get a money order or cash. The only reason you'd want money order or cash and not take a cashier's check is if you're doing something illegal because they are more untraceable. And my fiance decided that he wanted to get money order because at least you can kind of trace that and so it took him a while to get back and the movers told me that if he wasn't back soon that they were going to leave with our things i told them i parked my car in front of their truck and told them that if they attempted to leave with my items that i would call the police and uh so that was that was fun um so then he got back with the money, they started unloading our things, um, lots of stuff was broken, um, we have things missing, 
and uh, one of our snakes died as a result of this whole experience from uh, severe neurological damage from not having his home. And uh, so that happens, we lost a rat and we lost uh, a snake that we raised for the past four years from a tiny baby. Yep. Um, so we gave them the rest of the 7,000, which was, again, everything, everything I, I own. Uh, for everything I own, I gave them all the money in the world I yeah. had. Um, we have attempted to contact them since to get some kind of compensation for our broken items, for our violated guaranteed delivery date, and we have nothing. So far we have nothing. Uh, no one picks up, no one answers our calls, no one returns our voicemails, nothing. Um, I'm pretty sure that Ryan's personal cell phone that he gave us was fake. I'm almost sure that customer service's voicemail is just a cell phone. Um, so yeah, so we did get our things, um, we traded our life savings, uh, for our items. Um, they attempted to extort more money from us at every turn, uh, tried to back us into corners, and we had to be really, really savvy to use our way out. Um, if this sounds like, even in the beginning, something that might be happening to you, or you feel like you're interested in hearing the whole story, because there are many more details, more promises, more broken shit, be it promises or actual physical things, um, in the full video series, but this at least gives you uh, a blow-by-blow -blow recap. I'm posting these so it doesn't happen to you, because the experience was way harder than, than I could have ever imagined. And there are lots of details, like, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about the fact that you know, I don't have any furniture in my house, that I don't have any money, to, that I didn't have any money to buy groceries with because these people have all our, all our money. And, you know, I'm constantly on the phone with my mother who's telling me she's going to call the cops and, you know, on and on and on, you know, reading reviews from people that said that they, their stuff was stolen and never delivered and I guess they just take it and sell it. Um, the fear and helplessness in the whole situation was uh, really hard to describe now and uh, certainly a hard, a really hard thing to go through. Um, felt very violating and I would like to protect anyone from having that experience so uh, we fight on and hopefully you don't have to fight at all. So, uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Again, my, uh, five-part video is probably easily found the same way you found this one. So, uh, good luck.